is to go Jesus Jesus and you, you I put my trust You are Yahweh, hey, you are Yahweh, you are, you are Yahweh, hey, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, oh. Alpha, Omega, that's who He wants to speak about in my dream. So if 
one is that going to that room, they can't walk that out. There's a lot of crazy people out there who are trying. And you don't know the burden of a pastor. I, that's why I tell people, every associate pastor, celebrate your senior pastor. Because when you don't have a place, it's pastor who is thinking of moving the equipment from the storage room. It's pastor who is planning how to set up. It's pastor, then the man will pray. All the anointing he has prayed the night, he has used it to set up. Forgive. So he's tired. If God does not call you, you will not have anything to preach when you step there because you are tired. But when God gives you a place like this, it's a blessing. So when you have it, take advantage and step up and increase the anointing. It is time to come up to another level. Tell your neighbor, it is time to come up to another level. It is time for this parish to go up to another level. In the name of Jesus. Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 to 3. And then we are going to be reading two, three scriptures. We are, are mostly, we are going to stay in this book of Revelation and then one scripture in Ezekiel. Thank you, man. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 4 verses 1. To read it to five. 
Can, can you give uh, the mic a volume, please? Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. After these things, I looked, mm. and behold, a door standing open in heaven. Mm. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, mm. saying, Come up here, mm. and I will show you things which must take place after this. Hallelujah. Immediately I was in the in spirit. In the spirit. Mm -hmm. And behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Hallelujah. And he and he who sat at sat there was like a jasper. Hallelujah. And a sad stone mm. in appearance. Mm. And there was a rainbow around the throne. Yes, ma'am. In appearance Kabbalah. like emerald. Yes, ma'am. Around the throne were 24 thrones. Mm. And on the throne, I saw 24 elders sitting, uh. clothed in white robes. Yes, ma'am. And they had crowns mm. of gold on their heads. Read on. Verse 5. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, mm. thunders, mm. and voices. Yes. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne. I want you to look at that. Which are the seven spirits of now, God? Now, the question is, he said, there are seven spirits of God. It does not mean that God has seven spirits. It means that the spirit of God manifests himself in seven different dimensions. One of those dimensions is that the Spirit of God is said in the book of Ezekiel. How do we know the seven Spirit of God? Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1, he said, And the Spirit of counsel, the Spirit of mind, the Spirit of power, the Spirit of the fear of the Lord, the Spirit of the wisdom of God. So these are the seven Spirit of God that manifests itself, one Spirit of God in seven different manifestations. And each one of us as believers, we need those spirits. Now here is where I'm coming. He said, John said, I had a voice. And the voice said unto me, come up hither, and I will show you the things we shall be after. He said, and immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look like a jasper and a sanding stone, and there was rainbow about the throne inside like unto Emira. Now God was appearing in this place. Having the shape of a jasper does not mean that God is a jasper. Having the appearance of a sandin or sadio stone, it does not mean that God is sadio. He can take any shape that he wants to be. That is why he said to the children of Israel, thou shall have no other God and don't form any image. Because it is an error for you because he appears as a jasper. You now think that God is a jasper. You go and make an image of a jasper. He said, no, 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 I, I am the Lord. I change that more, but I can change to anything. Are you hearing me? So he said, don't make any image of anything. Because I am God who can appear as what I want to appear to you. This is one of the reasons why the revelation of God to every man must be personal. You've got to know God. You can't base your faith on my faith. I can't base my faith on your faith. Everybody got to grow into the faith that God has called you. When Moses was going to bring out the children of Israel, he asked them, he said, God, when I go to them, who am I going to see have sent me? And, and, and they knew him. He said, he, and he told Moses, he said, your, your father knew me. Your people, they knew me as the God of Abraham, as the God of Isaac, and as the God of Jacob. The all they knew was that three dimensions of God. God said, but when you are going to meet them now, don't introduce me as the God of Abraham. Don't introduce me as the God of Isaac. Don't introduce me as the God of Jacob. Tell them I am that I am. I have sent you. Because now I want to give them a new revelation. This is how you are going to grow in Christ. You need to begin to have an encounter with, or with Jesus yourself. Say, Lord, reveal yourself to me. Who are you to me? Not what my pastor is saying. Not what my mother tells me. Because what Jesus tell you about your, himself will change your life. Nobody will be able to take that from you. Sir, have you, have you not remember when Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and Jesus began to feed Mary. Martha was busy trying to do the cooking. And Martha said, Lord, why, why, why do you not tell my sister to come and cook for me? Jesus said, Martha, why are you bothered about too many things? He said, look, let me tell you something. He said, Mary have received something, listen to this, which nobody can take away from me. Let me tell you something. If you see a Christian in the days of trouble running elter skelter, he doesn't know God. You know why? 
Because in the day of trouble, let me keep in the frame of the camera. Thank you. Uh, is, it, is, it, is it possible for you to be following me as I'm? Thank you. Follow me. In the, look, let me show you something in the Bible. Mary sat still with Jesus, and Jesus was feeding her with manna. Jesus was putting strength within her. In the day that the brother died, Lazarus, who was the first person to, to, to run out to go and meet Jesus? Who, who ran to go and meet Jesus? It was Martha, not Mary. Go and read your Bible. The Bible said, and Mary sat still because she sat with the master in the days of trouble. She has this calmness in her. She knows that when the masters appear, something is going to be different. But Martha, who was busy not receiving manna from him, he was the one running. Master, I know that if you have been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus, oh, I go to church, oh, I pay my time. Why is my life like this? Keep your mouth shut. Your, mouth, your life is like that because you have not learned to sit with him and to hear from him. And to tell you that, hey, my son, my daughter, problem is coming home. But when it comes, just be still because I'm going to work all things out for the glory of my name to bring something good in your life. So Mary sat still. And Jesus came in. And Mary said, Master, he that you love is dead. And, Mary, and Jesus said unto her, Mary, I am the resurrection and the life. He said, your brother is not dead. Do you believe? Mary said, I believe. Martha said, I believe it shall rise in resurrection day. See the difference? One said, I believe. Because he has been sitting with the master. He knows that faithful is he who has called us. When he promised, he does not fail, man. But Martha said, I know in the resurrection. Jesus said, we are not talking about resurrection now. I am the resurrection and the life. We are not talking about the resurrection money. We are talking about now. Then something begins to peel from the eyes of Martha. Sir, you want, to, you want to see God in America? It is time to come up spiritually. Come up in your prayer life. Come up in your Bible study. You heard pastor was saying that he came back from work. And I tell you something. There is something about America that can kill your spirituality. Sir, I tell people, when people come from Nigeria, and they tell me, Pastor, don't, are we not going to have night VG? I always know why they're asking for night VG. Is it that they don't have social security, no work permit? <laughs> when people don't have work permit and social security, they want to come to church every day. Oh, they want us to have service. They want us to have NIVG. Somebody come to the pastor. Is there no NIVG today? I said, there is no NIVG. It's only once a month. He said, Pastor, we should be having NIVG every day. I said, you want to kill me? Are you the one that called me? Why should I be having NIVG every day? Why should I be having NIVG every day? You, you. Oh, it's because you don't have work. The moment this individual has work permit, has social security, Three months, I asked her, bro, we did not see each other. He said, Pastor, now walk. Oh. So I tell people, it is very easy for you to be spiritual when you, are very, when you are in Nigeria. If I want to believe your spirituality, come to America. Maintain the same tempo that you are maintaining in Africa. Because in Africa, you are looking for Jesus because you need a breakthrough. When you come to America, what else do you need now? You need Jesus, not breakthrough. Because the breakthrough now, you have it. Now you are in America. You can walk. There is no electricity. I tell people, you don't know what we go through as pastor. What brings people to church in Africa does not bring them to church in America. When I was pastoring in Nigeria, people come to church because they want to charge their phone. People come to church because they don't have a place to sleep. People come to church because then after service, they will go and hide to hide on their clothes because there is no light in their house. Church has generator. In America, you have light 24-7. Why are you going to come to church? In fact, they are going to even deceive you with double. Sister, so, 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 would you like to work double? You know, the first, the first three hours is going to be a regular pay. And then the next four hours, they're going to ask for you. And then that thing will deceive you. If you don't know God, you will begin to grab it and grab it and grab it. And before you know it, the fire of the spirit in you will die. This is how a lot, people wonder, how come this brother was so spiritual when he was in back home? How come he came to America? He's no longer on fire for God. You know why? Because when he was in Nigeria, who the God that he knew was the God of breakthrough. He didn't have Jesus as a Lord and Master. When you come to this place, you need to come to a new level, sir. And let me tell you something. There is a God that ordered the step of the righteous. You don't need to do what every other person is doing before you break through. Oh my God. I, I, I was sharing with some people. I said, look, have you not read in your Bible? Jesus said, take no thought of your life. What you will eat, what you will drink. He said, for all these things the Gentiles do seek after. He said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto me. Let me tell you, Jesus was saying to you and me, stop pursuing what the Gentiles are pursuing. 
money, job, houses, those are the pursuit of the Gentiles. Jesus said, what's the difference between you and them? If what one believer is running after, it's what you that you say you are born again, you are running after. Jesus said, don't run after what they are running after. Run after me. Run after eternity. Seek first the kingdom of God. Let them pursue it. I will bring it to you. Oh, God. Have you not read in your Bible in Ecclesiastes that those who love silver will never be satisfied? Those who love gold will never be satisfied? You know why? If money can satisfy people, how come the rich people, they are still miserable? Sir, you know why? God has taken satisfaction from things. He has put it in himself. That is why a wife can't satisfy the husband. A, 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 thank you, my brother. A, 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 husband, a husband can't satisfy the wife. The only way you are going to be satisfied together is if the two of you know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. So because if you don't have Jesus and have contentment inside of you, you can be striking all women. You will never be satisfied. You are going to still be in trouble. But there's a place where you come to this knowing of Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. He brings a kind of satisfaction on the inside of you. You are contented. People ask you, why are you so calm? You just tell them, God has made me calm. There is an anointing that comes from knowing God. And it means that God is saying to somebody, increase is going to come from your life in Jesus' name. It's the a, it's a will of God to increase us as a church. It's the will of God to increase you as a family. He wants to increase you spiritually. He wants to increase you financially. He wants to increase you ministerially. He wants to increase you in your marriage. Proverbs 28, chapter 25. People have always heard women saying, Oh, I want to lose weight. Why do you want to lose weight? Have you not read in the Bible? Proverbs 28, verse 25. Those who put their trust in the Lord shall be made fat. Forgive. Bring, bring, bring the scripture. Let me show you. I'm not lying. Proverbs 28, Evil 25. Men do not understand justice. Uh, uh, but those who seek the Lord uh, understand all. Oh, uh, no, no. That, that, what version is that? Read King James. Read King James. Let me show you. Look at the King James. He that is of a greedy spirit, stir it up strife. But he that put it, his trust in Jehovah shall be made one. I'm not the one who said it. The Bible said that. Why are you trying to lose weight? If you want to lose weight, stop putting your trust in God. But as long as your faith is in God, you are going to, you are going to increase. It's the mind of God to increase you and to make you to blow. Hallelujah. I used to say to my wife, my, my wife tell me, oh, I, do. I said, don't worry, you're a woman of faith. You, your trust in God is increasing. Said, ah! hey, it shows that your trust in God is increasing. Once your trust in God increases, you shall be made fire. He said in the book of Psalms, he said, the Lord shall increase my greatness. I shall be comforted on all sides. And when he says all sides, it means all sides. After marriage, you begin to see. Look, you need to see me before I was married. I have eight packs. But now I have a cake because my trust in God, my wife is feeding me. Forgive. So God, God will make you to increase. But how will you increase? Come up spiritually. Sir, it is an error for us to remain the same level of anointing. I want to show you something in Ezekiel. The day I saw that book of Ezekiel, my prayer life changed. I said, my father, my father, upgrade my anointing. Ezekiel that we read of in the Bible, we know him as a prophet. But go back to Ezekiel chapter 1. Let's read Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1 and 3. Media display. I discovered that Ezekiel started as a priest. And in the land of captivity, he became a professor. This man was not a prophet from the beginning. He was an ordinary priest. He was a pastor. But something happened in the land of captivity. His eyes was open. Let's read. And he said, now it came to pass in the third year because of time. In the fourth month, in the fifth year of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Chiba, that the heavens were open and I saw visions of God. I am praying for somebody today. May your heaven be open today in the name of Jesus. May you begin to see the visions of God in the name of <laughs> so when, when, when I, I was sharing something with our brother yesterday. My little boy, my second son, I took him, he, he played football, American football. And they had, this, they had a game in Stanford University. And I took him to the game. And um, this boy, as soon as the game was over, he ran to me. He said, Daddy, I have been here before. I said, when? He said, when we were in Nigeria, I saw this place. I said, what did you see? He said, I saw this building. I said, how old were you? He said, daddy, I was five. He said, I've been here before. I have been here before. Sir, let me tell you something. When you begin to know God, there is a knowing, there is a comfort, there is a confidence that comes inside of you. Everybody's running elter skelter. You just sit like Mary. Say, be running. What you are running after is coming to me. <laughs> 
So this is one of the things I tell sisters in the church, young sisters in the church. You're looking for husband. Get busy in the house of God. You're looking for promotion. Get busy in the house of God. Start preaching. Start bringing soul to the church. Start cleaning the church. You'll be shocked. In the place where you think you are not recognized, heaven is opening somebody's eyes to say, look at that sister. That is going to be a good wife. Look at that brother. That is going to be a good husband. I tell my workers in the church, if I give you assignment in the church, I'm helping your destiny. When you come to church, you are not helping me. I am the one helping you. If you come to this church, you are not helping Pastor Thomas. Pastor Thomas is helping you. If he asks you to come and sing, he's trying to build your confidence because one day you are going to become a CEO. One day God is going to promote you at your workplace. You are going to stand before people to talk. If you have not learned how to stand before people in the church, there are some people that will look at you. Your heart will skip at work. Those Indians and Chinese, you are playing. <laughs> they have gods. So they have gods. They, they, you, sir, let, what is wrong with us as Christians? The new prime minister of UK is an Indian guy. When the guy came before number 10 down the street, he was lightning all his candles to his, uh, what do they call it? They said Duala, what do they call it? What they, Duali. He was lightning. But if it is you, believer, say, no, 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 I, I, I don't want to appear as a fanatic. No, no, I don't want people to see me that I am being eccentric. The eccentric now for Jesus Christ. Those people are not afraid of their God. But you know, as I was looking at the video of that Indian guy, and I said, Lord, why is it that people are not provoked at this? And the Lord said unto me, the name of Jesus is an offense unto me. People get, if it is a Christian that do that, you are going to see reaction. You know, you are going to see reaction. Dr. Beams, my, my jacket, is, I have an anchor one of my anchor there. You are going to see reaction. That is why a Muslim can enter in the office. Throw, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. May the Lord wipe away your, all your sorrows and tears in Jesus' name. That is why, have you ever seen anybody reacting when a Muslim spread their net and do Allah Akbar? Did you see people complain? They can't complain because you know why? That name is not an offense. The moment you don't say in the name of Jesus, something stir up. Demons in people will react. Oh, that's to tell you that you serve something that is more powerful. Your God is more powerful. That is why the name of Jesus is an offense unto them. People react to the name of Jesus. Carry your Bible. They say, oh, you, 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 you are born again. You carry this Bible. Something just provoke people about Jesus. Because it's the name that is above every other name. Because every other God, they are dead. And they are nowhere to be found. But he's the only one who is still alive and he's still coming back. And all eyes shall see him. And they will say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So Ezekiel said, I was there by the river. And my eyes, I saw the visions of God. Sir, sir, sir. Pastor, I used to think that nobody can see God. Ezekiel said he saw the vision of God. John told us in Revelation chapter 4. He told me I saw the one who sat on the throne. When I was pastoring in Nigeria, I was pastoring under a very crazy anointed man of God. He was a prophet by excellence. I used to think that he's the most anointed prophet in my life. Until I met another man of God by the name of Prophet Sadu. Prophet Sadu, we have out of body experience. The heaven that me and you, we are praying that when we die, we should go. That man goes there as if he's going to the mall. He will be transported in his house. The first day I listened to this man, the man said, of all men that have been born on earth, he said, he's one of the three who have been prepared to see God the Father. I was shocked. I said, how can you tell me you saw God the Father? When the Bible said unto me, no man can see God. He dwells in a light and immortality that no man can approach. And the man said something that he was in his house sitting down. He said, one of his associates betrayed him. And he was angry. Now, how can this guy do this to me? I trusted him. I gave him everything. He said, as he was thinking, he said, Jesus appeared to him. This man will see Jesus. He will see all the same who have gone in glory. John, Isaiah, they will walk inside this room, not in the spirit, oh, physically. And tell him, open the scripture. Read this place. What does he mean? He will interpret. He will tell them, no, that's not what happened. This is the reason God asked me to write Isaiah chapter 4. This is the reason God asked me to write Isaiah chapter 9. And they will begin to teach him life scripture. Sir, because you have not seen another level of God, you think the one you know is enough. When you hear how some people are having God experience, you will cry for yourself. You say, ha! Ah, is this where I am when other people are going up? I am still at this level. We still have to beg you to come to church. We still have to tell you that, oh, sister, don't fight. Let it go. You are still holding on to something that somebody did to you 20 years ago. Sir, you are still a baby Christian. It is time to come up. Come up spiritually. 
What did your offense, your wife offended you? In the days of Methuselah, you are still remembering in the days of John the Baptist. Something is wrong. It means you are not growing spiritually. Eternity is longer than long life. It is time for us to do something. Ezekiel said, look at this. He said, I saw the vision of God. And in the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim captivity, the word of Jehovah came expressly unto who? Ezekiel the priest, the son of Busi, in the land of the Shadian, by the river Kiba, and the hand of Jehovah was upon him. Give me verse 2 and 3. This man, give me verse 3. Is that verse 3? Now, yes, stop there. This man was a priest, but he was also in captivity. To tell you that bondage does not respect your title. He was a priest, though. The son of Busi. Yes, he was in the land of captivity. Yet, he was in a strange land. But you know something that changed my life about this? The guy said, even though I'm in the land of captivity, even though I'm in America, there's something that's going to happen. My father, my father, while he was by the river of Kiba, everybody was busy. This man was throwing bombs to heaven. My father, when you are shall not me, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Open my heaven, open my heaven. I don't want to die in this captivity. And God had him. And the heaven opened. He said, and I saw the vision of God. Something is going to happen for somebody today. If you can cry unto God, God is going to open the heaven and you are going to see eternity. You are going to start seeing the vision of God like you have never seen him before. When you see the vision of God, this is where I'm beginning to round up. It is time for your work to increase. Revelation chapter 3, I want to show you something. Sir, everybody that comes to church, Jesus knows your work. I tell our church people, Stop having this mentality that this church is Pastor Thomas' church. This is Pastor Bayo's church. Pastor Thomas did not die for you. Pastor Bayo did not die for you. Jesus died and shed his blood for you. So when you find yourself in the church, it is a privilege to start preparing for your eternity. Oh, sir, you think that when you get to heaven, everyone's going to reward you for the work you do as a doctor, as a nurse. No, sir. He's going to reward you for what you have done for the kingdom. Revelation chapter 3, verse 1. Now it Revelation chapter 3, sir, verse 1. I want to show you this. Revelation 3 from verse 1. And to the angel of the church in Sardis, write this thing. See it he that had the seven spirits. You see the seven spirits of God coming again. And the seven stars. The stars represent the people. It represent you and represent me. And represent the church. Each star represents the church. And each believer is a star in the church. So I need you to understand that there is a reward coming in heaven. I'm sure that you, some of you have read the book Final Quest. You'll be shocked when Rejoiner was talking in Final Quest. A lot of things that he said there. Look, a lot of people will get to heaven and there'll be surprises. You are going to see a lot of bishop, archbishop, pope, sitting in the lowest place in heaven. And there will be a brother who is just a worker in the church, who clean the church and is occupying one of the best thrones in heaven. Sir, let's stop having this mentality that we are working for pastor. No, 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 no. You are working for your own eternal reward. Every time my provincial pastor asks, give me an assignment. Okay, let's leave all this pride. One of the things that I kept praying, God opened my eyes to in the book of in the final quest, is that he said, look, there are people who are anointed, but they were lacking one garment. That garment of humility. If you, look, if you are not humble, you can't serve in the church. Because sometimes God can place a young pastor who is older than you, who is younger than you, and place it upon you. If you begin to, talk, who is your mate? Ah, but you are not going anywhere. Because there are two judgment seats. There is a judgment throne of God and the judgment seat of Christ. Anybody that appears at the judgment throne of God, you are damned forever. No repentance. But at the judgment seat of Christ, believers are going to appear there. Go and read your Bible. He said that is where we are going to receive reward for what we have done in the flesh. He said either good or bad. And so I've been praying some prayer, Pastor. My father, my father, Erase all my bad by the blood of Jesus. Before I appear before you, it will not be good for my bad to be shown. Everybody got a bad thing in you. Nobody knows. When we come to church, we appear like an angel. But there is one that the Bible says we are naked before him. We are naked before him. You can't hide. You can't hide before him. So that is why transformation must start with you. The Lord transform me from the inside. When the transformation happened on the inside, it will appear on the outside. He said, now, everybody look at what he said to this church, which is also saying to us this, ma- this morning or this afternoon. Oh, my God. I know thy works. This scripture makes me afraid every time. I know thy works. That thou hast a name. That thou livest. But you are dead. 
He said, before men, you appear to be a good brother. But I know that your fire is out. I know that you are dead. I want you to pray quickly. Say, my father, my father. Rekindle your fire inside of me, Lord. Whatever that is dead on the inside, bring it in back alive. Lord, in this house, let the fire of God burn. Let there be fire of God. Let there be fire of your love, of your fear, of your evangelism. Increase my work, oh God. Help me to love you more. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let me tell you something. Sir, <laughs> I thank God for Dr. Toby and his wife. When they were with us in California, it took me almost two, three years before I knew that his wife was a medical doctor. I didn't know. I didn't know. I don't. I never knew that Bimbo was a medical doctor, and she was working with my wife, carrying my wife back, serving mommy, mommy. The day they told me she met, I know that Doctor Toby is a, is, is a PhD holder. Now I've decided to add some more degree to myself, sir, because I told my children because when I die, I don't want people to be making jests of your father that I don't have title. So I have title behind my name. I have taken some certification now. I have, I have, I have bachelor's in theology, master in theology, PhD in theology. I, I also have I also I also have PSC in physics education. Now I have taken some certification. I have PSM one, PSM two, save one, PAL one, PAD. Ah, my children said, "What do you want to do?" I said, "Then you will add PDP, APC, OPC to my name, so that when I die, people can you can have all this title. too." But I tell them, "But all those titles mean nothing in eternity, sir. They mean." Uh, <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> I've received another one now. An honorary member of Victory Temple Church. That's another thing. I had it at the back of my name. But all those titles, you receive them. Sir, there is only one thing. He said, I know your work. What are you doing when you are in Victory Temple? When pastor asks you, come and teach Bible story, are you complaining? There is an angel that records everything, sir. I tell my church member, let me ask you to come and stand in church and talk it to people. If I tell you, come and be the secretary, I'm training you for your tomorrow. There is a brother in our church in Antioch. When I was pastor in Jesus at Antioch, the guy said, Pastor, I want to thank you. Every time you ask us, before I used to be afraid, but because you ask us to begin to take, um, what's it called? Take announcement, do this. He said, I didn't know they were going to call me in my office. The guy was working with Chevron and they, 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 they now, uh, what do you call it, transfer him to a place called Corpus Christi in Texas. He said, when I got there, I was to speak to the vice president, the directors. He said, when I look at their faces, he said, fear want to grip me. Then I remember what you taught us in the church, that when you are looking at people and they are making you afraid, look straight at them, but don't look into their eyes. You look as if you are looking to them. Be looking at their forehead. Anything they are saying, you are looking. He said, pastor, I use it. I said, you see, I, what I am teaching you, what, that, what I'm teaching you has work. This is why I, say, I wrote a book titled The Power and the Blessing of a Church. Why? And I wrote in the book 24 reasons why you need a church. 30 reasons why you need a pastor. People say, I don't want to go to church. Look, let me tell you something. You need a pastor. If you are going to get married, you can't marry yourself. Let us assume this mommy is my, 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 my spouse I want to marry. And I say, now, let's go to the church. Today I marry you. Say, I marry you. You can't join yourself. Somebody has to join you now. Okay, let us even assume you can join yourself. The day you die, how are you going to bury yourself? You are now lying down. Say now, dead body, dust to dust, <laughs> head to head. No, it's me as your pastor. You need me. I am going to come and say dust to dust, head to head, artist to artist. So if you don't come to church, I will not bury you. So you need this is why you need the church. That is a power and the blessing. And let me tell you something. Every time you come to church, whatever you are looking for, there's somebody in the church who know who, somebody who knows somebody that have that what you're looking for. Don't this is one of the reasons the Bible said, do not forsake the assemblies of one another. Somebody said, oh, he provoked me in church. Nigerian church. Well, Nigeria, I don't like to go to Nigerian church. Nothing is wrong with Nigerian church. It's you that is the problem. There's nothing wrong with Nigerian church. What is wrong with you? It's you that talk. This building does not say anything. <laughs> does this building say anything since you have become here? It is you that go and talk. So I tell people, you want your church to grow. Go and say nice things about your pastor. Have you seen my pastor? When my pastor preached, Pastor Thomas, oh my God. My pastor is handsome. Have you seen his white beard? In fact, it's golden. Say nice thing about your pastor. Say nice thing about your pastor's wife. You see, one of the mi mi mistakes we make in the church, you go to saloon and you begin to gossip about one another. Who wants to come to your church? The white people will not even come. Black people will not come not to talk of white people. You're going to be talking about people. No, I tell my people, go to the saloon. Don't say anything about your church. Say nice thing. If somebody reports your sister, say, I'm sorry about that. I'm going to make sure I step on it. I don't think she meant it that way. Even though you know that that's where the sister used to be evil. 
or you are going to cover. Mm. Because we got to grow the church. You see, the Bible says the work of God must not be damaged. No damage must be done to the work of God. I've got to protect the work. You've got to protect it. He said, I know your work. I know that you are alive, but you are dead. But everybody look at this. Be thou watchful and establish the things that remain which were ready to die. For I have no, I found no work of thine perfected before my God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and this year and keep and repent. If therefore shall not wash, I will come as a thief and thou shalt not know what I will, I will come unto thee. But thou hast a few names in Sardis that did not defile their garment. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh shall be arrayed in white garment. And I will know why his blood his name out of the book of life. And I will confess his name. Before my father and before him. May Jesus be able to confess your name before his father. Let's rise up on our faith. Let's rise up. Sir, I know your word. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is here to the churches. God is saying something to us. Victory Temple, it is time to come up. It is time to increase our work. Increase your prayer life. Increase the Bible study. Increase choir. Increase evangelism. Increase in your giving. He said, fear not only to flow for this. The will of thy father to make you go. Increase in your prayer for your leadership. I want you to begin to pray this morning and say, my father, my father, let there be an increase of your grace in my life. Let there be an increase of your power, of your glory, of your anointing. In this church, in the name of Jesus, increase, oh Lord, this work. Increase, oh God, the leadership. Increase our workers, oh Lord. Let there be a fresh fire. Let there be a fresh fire. Let there be a fresh grace. In the name of Jesus. Let there be an increase. Let there be an increase. Let there be an increase in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I, Pastor, I believe that next time we are going to come and visit you. This place will not be enough for you again in Jesus' name. There is something about praying women. Women in this church, I thank God for your life. One of the things that God has done for me in our church, God has used my wife to hold the women in prayer. Every Tuesday, they pray for the church. Pray for the women. Pray for their husband. Every Thursday, every week. Week in, week out. So one day, the men called me. They told me, Pastor, the way mommy is leading the women in prayer, come and be prayed for. Her. God did not send me that one. Am I funny? <laughs> Organize yourself and begin to pray for yourself. I told them, I'm not here to raise hyenas and pins. I'm here to raise lion. Lion, nobody feed lion. They go to hunt for themselves. Let the women pray for us. Men, stand up and stand in the gap. Stand with your pastor. Pray for him. And then the moment I said that, they move into action. They begin to have meetings. They begin to organize themselves. Once in a while, I peep in to listen to what they are saying because men are difficult. Man, they are not like women. Because I asked them to go and pray. They are discussing church administration. I told them that is not the purpose of this meeting. No. You are not the one that called me. Jesus called me. Don't discuss administration. Go and pray for yourself. Pray that you will not die before your time. Pray that God will give you strength to be able to be husband for your wife. Pray that you, you enjoy your children. I said you should go and be praying. You are going to be discussing church administration. Uh, uh, how much are we making in the church? How is that your business? It's not your business. You have better things to do with your life. Go and increase the oil on your head. In the middle of the night when you are sleeping as a man. And the Holy Ghost is upon you. And demonic activity want to enter your house. You lay your hand on your wife. Lay, ga, ga, ba, ga, ba, ga, ba, ga, ba, ga. <laughs> because you are alive in the spirit. You are alive. Women are powerful. The reason why I stopped to share that testimony, there is a church in London called Kensington Temple. That church used to be great before. Suddenly it went down. And a man came in by the name of Colin Dye, who started pastoring the church. And the church was struggling. And they said there were some seven Nigerian women. Oh, Lord. Thank God for African women. They went to Pastor Colin Dine and said, we have heard of the revival that has happened in this church. He said, every Sunday, and we will come to this church three times in a week. The best men, we are going to be crying to God. And they begin to cry to God on behalf. They were not British. They were Nigerian. 
After six months of serious, dangerous prayer, Kessin Temple blew up. That church came back alive. Women, you have an assignment, sir. You have an assignment. Stand with pastor and his wife. Stand with the church and begin to increase the temple. Pray for your husband. Because I tell you something. One of the things that Satan tried to do is to keep men from church. And I tell you, there is something about the presence of a man in your life, the presence of a father, that, that makes a lot of difference. This is one of the reasons, if you look at the African-American community, a lot of their men are in prison. You know why? Because it's a strategy of the devil to make their children wayward and to mess up the family. But you see, the presence of a man, when my father was alive, nobody dare come to our compound to come and talk to my mother. The day my father died, my father, younger brother, came in. I am alive, oh. He told my mother that my father's room, he wants to be sleeping there. You know what that means? With one leg. If you sleep in my father's room, in the middle of the night, he told me, yeah, by your, by your <laughs> You understand? So I told, my, I told my mother, tell him that you have a husband now. I am still the husband and I'm alive. Don't give him, don't give him the key. The, but when my father was alive, they can't do that. So this is why women pray for your husband. Your husband will not be taken away in Jesus' name. Men, I pray for you men in this story. You will not die suddenly in the name of Jesus. Stress and fatigue of America will not kill you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will increase your heart. Any one of you that is sick now and you don't know, I command that sickness to disappear in the name of Jesus. Because there are times that Satan will plant things in our body we don't know that they are there. And suddenly you just say, oh, but I saw that brother last week. Oh, I saw that man. What happened? He just died. It's a strategy of the devil to remove men. You know why? Because he knows that the men bring stability. They bring stability. Stability in the home. Stability in the church. Stability in the society. I pray for victory temple. But the grace of God will increase in this house. The power of God will increase in this house. Amen. Upon the set man, upon the angel of the house, strength will come unto you, sir. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Divine revelation to move the church to the next level. Jesus. May it come upon you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't know why I'm saying this. Anybody that pastor has given assignment, please don't reject it. Because there is something that is about to drop on you. A promotion is about to come. A blessing is about to come. A honor is about to come. You will be shocked. You'll be sure. When God bless you, he bless you for his church, sir. He said, through prosperity, my city shall be spread abroad. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you because you are God. Thank you, Father. Lord, we ask that the heaven over this assembly be open perpetually in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let that be an increase of your gifts. Increase of your presence. Amen. Increase of anointing. Amen. Increase of revelation. Amen. Let the doors of this church be open for souls to come in in the name Amen. of Jesus. Men and women who will be established. Oh God. Men and women who will know God and increase your work. Amen. And do more for the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Thank you Heavenly Father. You. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus marvelous name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you George. I'm glad to be with you. God bless you. Wow, just in that same mode of prayer, let's just uh, stretch our hand to the man of God. We have been blessed, we have been challenged, and we believe that the Spirit of God that I have poured out on him, the Spirit of the Lord, we restore the virtue back in the name of Jesus Christ. I feel him back in the name of Jesus Christ, multiple anointing that he has spread out, but I restore them back to him in multiple in the name of Jesus Wisdom, revelation, knowledge, Lord, let it increase in him in the name of Jesus Christ. We cover him and his wife blood with the blood of Jesus as they be heading back home. Father, no weapon formed against them shall prosper. The children where they left home, the church where they left behind. Lord, they will meet in peace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The rest of us still in that mode of prayer. We take this song. Yes, my cup, Lord, I lift it up to you. We've been challenged this morning. Say, so come up and increase your work. Come up and increase your work. Let's take that song in the mode of that worship, that Lord. I wish I want to do all of these things that I've heard this morning. But Lord, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Father, yes, my cup, I lift it up to you. Feel this thirst in my soul. Feel me, Lord. Let's take that song this morning. 
Here's my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsty of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill it up and make me sing it as if, as if you mean it. Sing it as if you mean it. Yes. We are being challenged this morning that we need to step up the place. We need to step up. We need to step up. And I know many are willing, but the distraction of the enemy is there. The workload is there. The challenges, the financial issues are there. The distraction of this country is there. Lord, I will lift it up. Fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill my cup. Spiritual cup, Lord. Fill it. Financial cup, Lord. Fill it. Every area, Lord, that I've been with, Lord. Breath of heaven. Fill me till I want no more. That when you are called, I will not be reluctant. When you call, I will answer several times. When you give me the assignment, I will not be frustrated in the name of Jesus. The word has come to us this morning. Yes. God knows us. He knows the work that we're doing. And he's going to ask us questions about how we've done it. Lord, we increase us spiritually, physically, materially, Maritally, every circumstances of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise, Lord. We give you honor. This month is coming to an end tomorrow. We are walking into the newness of Thanksgiving month. That, Lord, you will help us not to for forget who you are in our lives. Father, this week we commit into your hand that you will go with us. You will lead us. You will direct us. Even... Those that will be traveling, those that are on the road, Father, we cover the hair with the blood of Jesus, the sea with the blood of Jesus, the ground with the blood of Jesus. Safe journey to everybody in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This week, Lord, let our light shine. Is there anybody in our job that we would need to minister to, but we are reluctant about it? Give us that courage to minister. Let our light shine forth that, Lord, people will ask us about who you are in our lives. And we will not shy about showing them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I want us to thank God for the man of God this morning. Like I said, God has a message. And that's why I was not able to preach this morning. But I don't know if you have been blessed. You have been blessed. Let me hear you shout hallelujah. Uh, your hallelujah is weak, oh. Hallelujah. Is it because the blessing this morning is challenging you to, to step forward? That's why your hallelujah is weak. But I pray for the grace to step forward for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we thank you very much. Uh, we, I'm really blessed this morning. So let's share the grace as we go out and uh, shine for the Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I am the one the Lord has blessed, so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. We clap for the Lord. Yes, it is a clap for him. Clap for the Lord. We have the